Can you hear my? Can y'all hear my gum? I don't want to smack it. Nah, you're good. Man. Yeah, you're yeah, fine. Okay. Yeah, you're fine. Right. Good. Yep. Good. Okay. <laughs> welcome to the Spark and Plug Talks episode. Oh fuck! Four. Of season <laughs> is it, two. Is episode four. Okay, episode four of season two, and we are with the magnificently talented, uh, insanely juiced, uh, <laughs> massively ripped, uh, acoustic shredder, uh, Josh Maxey of Old Man Winter. We've Thank had you. two really Thank shredded you. guys on here, man. Yeah. Jason Tillis, when you walk in, I'm like, damn, he's like, Adam, fucking Jack. Adam only, Jack. Yeah, yeah, Adam only knows super super Jack guys. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, man. Thanks yeah. uh, for thanks. coming out here. Thanks, thanks for, for performing me. for us. Right. Um, and you did two songs from uh, your project, Old Man Winter. Yes. And uh, is Old Man Winter, is that uh, your primary project? Like, are you the the head honcho on everything there and stuff like that. Yeah. Old man winner winner is basically just me. Uh, you know, just songs I write. I kind of wanted a name I could use for a full band or acoustic if needed. And then as far as studio stuff, I'm usually getting guys. I got just you. to play. Okay. So excuse, excuse me, just a hair closer right here. Yeah, is that better? Go. Yeah. Um, well, that's dope, man. Uh, and you've got, you've got a whole album out. Right. Of, yeah, yes. Okay. And uh, yeah, not to be confused with the SoundCloud uh, yes. Old Man Winters. I think there's uh, like 13 of them on SoundCloud. So. <laughs> Josh is definitely, uh, I think you, you could probably say you're pretty distinct from all them. Yeah. I don't I, know if you've listened to I them. I really, I haven't, uh, but I uh, don't like even think devote so. the time of day I'd to I'd like them. to <laughs> think so, man. So, well, fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, well, you know, let's start with the, with the foundation, getting to the, getting to the dirt. Um, where, where are you coming from musically? Where'd you start? Uh, wh- who'd you start listening to uh, to begin with? And, right. and what was uh, what was one of the f- some of the first artists where you were like, music's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh man, there's there's several different kind of stages. Uh, Neil Young was a big one for me. Oh, fantastic! Back in the day, we we're talking about him earlier, but he was a big one for me. And then kind of later on, it was. Uh, the Pixies and some of that kind of kind of getting into the grunge. And then in the nineties and early two thousands, it was a lot of uh granddaddy sparkle horse, Elliot oh, Smith cool. type stuff. Oh, sick. So uh, kind of transition, but um, it's Granddaddy's always kind of, awesome. yeah, they're great, man. And um, Elliot Smith and sparkle horse are both like huge influences of me just as far from a songwriting aspect. I got gotcha. you. Know? Yeah. So those um, are, that, I love, uh, we need like a wall of of influences or something like that. Some kind of like people can draw in on chalk or something like there. Yeah, I wouldn't guess uh, that would be Smith. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't guess that. Really? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, yeah. A lot of people that come out, they'll like start naming off, and you're like, oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Taj Mahal, huh? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Taj Mahal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if right. I'll, I have awesome. yet to hear yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah, That's we have funny. yet to hear Taj Mahal. Yeah. It's so. fantastic, man. When did you start? Uh, when did you start writing your own, playing your own stuff? Uh, man, I started writing songs pretty much out of the gate. Uh, I'm not. I don't know a lot of the chords or the notes, and I'm, you know, I'm not trained in any sense like that. So, really, early on, as soon as I could start kind of putting mm-hmm. things together, I would pretty much make up songs, mm-hmm. and uh, that's just where it kind of took off for me. It kind of became like a just a way that I kind of just dealt with things and, and expressed things and remembered things and all that. So, yeah. It was a great outlet. That's what, right. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah, I've always. Yeah. So that was pretty, uh, natural. And I think a lot of it too, is just that I, my inability to even now, like I'll try to learn a cool cover song or something to impress somebody. And I forget it within a day, man. <laughs> yeah. I just don't have that. It just doesn't lock in, you know? So for sure. Um, but that's pretty much how it started. Yeah. Know? We've had a couple, uh, pretty pretty old i'll say musicians that are like man if i if i remembered every single song i ever learned i'd right. ma- i'd make a million bucks a year just because i'd be like the walking jukebox right you know? yeah, <laughs> absolutely. yeah cover songs absolutely. are my my bane dude yeah i, I hate doing cover songs right. unless yeah. like i really unless it's like my idea to do it right. and i'm like let's fucking do it but like <laughs> yeah. learning i'm like oh my god it's <laughs> tough yeah. it's hard yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah does that stem from a hatred of uh or from a uh a suffering 
of sorts in a cover cover band in high school. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> we, trauma. Yeah, we, trauma. for some reason in our high school, we had, <laughs> had a cover band that we'd play at basketball games. It was really cringe. But, uh, yeah, that could probably, you, you can probably tie some things back to that. <laughs> right. It's just like, it just sucks, man. Yeah. So well, like, looking back, it was pretty cringe. But at the, and kind of during the time, it was kind of cringe. But there were times when we definitely had fun. But, yeah, we did like a veterans thing and we did rock in the free world. And I just song. smashed yeah. the shit out of the drum set. Yeah. Not like literally, <laughs> but like I was like Getting fucking it. like caveman in it back right. there. And our <laughs> music teacher was like, God damn it. Because he told me every time I played that song, he's like, dude, you got to stop being so loud on the snare. Right. So I can't help it, dude. It's fucking rock in the free world, dude. I got it. <laughs> We'd be playing it. Just gotta like, go hard. I got to go God. balls of wall. God. Dude. I love it. Yeah. 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 Hitting the shit out yeah. of the snare. <laughs> That's great. And yeah, I tried to do a drum solo at the end. Just me just beating the shit out of the drums. And well, one of the sticks went flying. No, no, it's because I threw the stick at the cymbal for like the final, like, oh, I threw, threw it at the cymbal, but it like skimmed Skipped. off the cymbal, yes. almost hit a guy. And I was like, oh, shit. Right. Yeah. Nice. Good times. That nice. was the only way we could make cover band in high school cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man, that would be cool. I mean, especially at the high school, you know, deal, you'd probably get some girls doing that. No. Kind of, but like, kind of, it would be cool if it was just us, but it like it's cover band, so there was a bunch more people oh, in it, you know, yes. like other singers, right. other people. Man, we're, who, kinda, yeah. and we're also kind of stupid. Like, we're just yeah. lucky we got wives now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, we're, we're still dumbasses. Like, like, we're still huge chicks idiots. never thought we <laughs> were cool. Like, no. I love it. But uh, it yeah. was kind of cool. We got a, we did have like a whole class period just where we just showed up and played. So, right. yeah. I mean, that was kind of cool. No, but, definitely. Yeah, but we were also playing like fucking. Katy Perry songs and shit because like mm -hmm. Dylan was the only dude singer in the right, fucking right. It, like there was like four girl singers and so we had to do like Shania Twain and shit like that what yeah. did we do Shania Twain we did we did uh any man of my yeah fuck me what? yeah what is that song come on girls or something like that or there's that one too yeah yeah, yeah. we didn't do I would have done that <laughs> come on girl that yeah. was kind of cool yeah, but, uh, any man of mine holy fuck oh uh, dude. dude they were all and then you know we like this the <laughs> And we like we were just stupid, and some of the songs we picked were like, you know, fucking Hotel California. Yes. But we did the whole like oh, six 40, or seven 47 minute, minute version. Yeah. Yes. And then we were doing the outro solo, and you only get like seven minutes at the beginning of the game to even play music. That's so we great, just dude. played Cal Hotel we California. Played part, what eight home games, and we never <laughs> thought the idea in our head, the idea never came to us that we should change our set list up. So after the first two games, everybody in the crowd would just be like, dude, yeah, we've, we've already heard Take It Easy. Here it is. You guys yeah, want to keep on this. playing the Eagles. Like, yeah, and then we, we were like, Hotel California again. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. The girl singer, and, you know, they were like, God. <laughs> and nothing was mic'd up, you know. Like, the only thing that was, we had, like, two speakers that, like, the vocals were going through, and they pushed us off into a corner of the gym. And then it's just... And then, so you just hear the drums and basically singers. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was fuck, It was a trip. Yeah, man. it was like push yeah. your amps, your little shitty, like... Yes, the 11. Eighth grade amps that you got, and you yeah. were just like... Like, we were such dumbasses, man. We did Hotel California. We did fucking Sultans of Swing, and then That's I put an X song, to that, though. man. I was like, I cannot sound... Like fucking Mark Knopfler, guys. Right. I just sound like a shitty Bob Dylan. Uh, and that's yeah. saying something, because yeah. sometimes Bob Dylan sounds like a shitty Bob that's Dylan, right. dude. Yes, like, I was like, I sound fucking terrible. We should start adding like 85 <laughs> verses to that song. Every fucking Bob Dylan <laughs> song is like 46 <laughs> verses. And it like, was, what the dude, fuck? Dude, it was fucking tough, man. I was like, we got it. So, what uh, Katy Perry song was it? Was it a Katy Perry? It was a. Oh, man. We did it titanium. Was, a, was that oh, a Katy Perry? No, it's pink. I don't know. No, it's not pink. It was. Um. It was David Guetta with like a Sia or something. You know that like I am Titanic. That's the song I'm thinking of. Right, right. Yeah, we did that one. But we we did that. We did why? We How did, that did yeah, that's um we did um but we did Pride and Joy, but it but it Pride and Joy. but a chick sang it, so it was like I try to do a the tame version, you know. Right. It was like, "Well, you heard about love." Give me yeah, it was side very like blind. trying to nah, weird nah, sultry nah. shit. And it was kind of like lounge that music, was, but not we did lounge. a couple like, more. The vocals were lounge, but like everybody else was still like Stevie Ray Vaughan in it. And right, shit. Yeah. yeah, going. Yeah, kind of odd. All but. the songs I pitched out all got fucking shat on, dude. I wanted to do "Walking on the Sun" by Smash Mouth because I love that drum track yeah. and yeah. the music teacher was like, oh, he says something about toking it up, so we can't do that. Yeah, we almost really? couldn't do Hotel California because they say warm smell of uh, Colitas. Colitas, yeah. 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 But so we had to replace that with warm smell of fajitas. Because, <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah, we yeah, did. We did that really yeah, happen? Yeah. It really happened, oh, dude, because he was like, no. 
No, we're not doing that. I'm immediately thinking of Ween right now. Like you're talking about <laughs> yeah. fajitas in a song. <laughs> Fucking bananas and blood. We should have right. done that yeah. one. Yeah. Bananas and blood, yeah. <laughs> Dude, like, we should have done the whole mollusk in its entirety. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> People have been, like, really fucking weirded out. Do you like, do you like Ween, Josh? Love him. Yeah. Love Ween. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah. Have Adam's you seen him live? introduced us to Ween. Adam is? Yeah, he yeah. held us captive of the studio and showed us yes. the whole mollusk album. Yeah. That was, uh, so, which was the... Oh man, there was Godwin Satan. There was uh, the Pod was the one that oh, we yeah. got into. It was a big one for us back then. I like that and, country uh, album they did. They did a country one that was pretty solid too. They're so fucking pretty they had good, a lot of great, dude. Uh, yeah. Pretty fucking La, solid. La Caca Rocha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that one's great. What's yeah, the one so. with uh, your party on it? Is That's that La Caca Rocha. Rocha? Yeah. yeah, I love yeah. that song. Yeah, yeah. we play yeah. that unironically at like when we we're younger we'd have parties and we'd just be like all right everybody come inside you know we're getting in to be like you know with yeah, the, really with the, your party and yeah, everything yeah, yeah. well yeah, yeah the fucking finger food part i always I always knew that. Yeah. i can't think of the lyrics now but if you played the song i bet i'd definitely be able to sing the whole thing <laughs> right and nobody knew what the fuck it was but right. every now and then adam would like sense that somebody's playing ween and that there's some alcohol and he'd just content appear. in our bodies and he'd, be, he'd yeah. just be like he'd just like Materialize. Materialize. Like, <laughs> playing some weed, guys. Huh? <laughs> yeah. And we're like, oh, fuck, Adam's here. Just cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pure Guava, I think, had the uh, the one where they're like ordering at a Mexican restaurant for like oh, yeah. 20 minutes on a song <laughs> yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fucking weed's so awesome, man. Uh, well, let's, uh, I guess we'll. Like I said, we get off on tangents. No, it's good, man. It's good. <laughs> what, um, so what, we'll break down some of those, those two songs right. you played. Yeah. So first one was Ohio, uh-huh. which I distinctly remember because it says, fuck you, fuck Ohio. Right. First four yeah. words. Yeah. yeah. A lot of fucks in that one. Yeah. And it's so, awesome. Mm-hmm. I love shit like that where it's like the first, <laughs> the first things you say, just grab, you know, right. it's just like, pay attention, motherfucker, because you're right. listening to cool shit yes yeah, i dig the shit out of that yeah that really cool. how'd you come about Thanks. with that one uh so that one was uh that was the first song i wrote um for the ghost of el camino real that this current album uh and i actually wrote it during my divorce so and i think one of you, which one of y'all just got married i just got married okay so don't listen to this story Okay, <laughs> yeah. I could tell it was directed towards somebody. Right. Yeah, I was like, definitely. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't just like, I fucking hate Ohio, man. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, Ohio is actually a guy in that one. And uh, it was basically found out that my ex, my ex wife, she was my wife at the time, was having an affair with this guy. Mm-hmm. And it was an ex of hers that she had dated for a while. And he lived in Ohio. And she was going to Ohio and staying with him. And then, mm-hmm. obviously, I found out about it. It didn't go well. So Yeah. Uh, that yeah, was pretty her. much. Fuck Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that whole situation. So, And that was really the, I'd really set aside the music stuff and was really trying to focus on being a, you know, super domesticated family guy. Mm-hmm. And so that whole thing just collapsing and burning down and everything really you know, lit the fuse for the, yeah, the right. album that I wrote. So yeah, sick. Served as like a catalyst almost right. for that. Yeah. yeah. Badass yeah. man. Well and it's cool that you harbored that, you know, that you like were able to like get those feelings and materialize it into songs. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Cause sometimes it's yeah. really fucking hard to do. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that whole album and the recording process was really therapeutic for me because it was like and I always joke and say it was like my divorce album, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um but it just writing about it and then kind of processing it. And then in the studio, you know how shit, you got to do everything Dude, again, 600 again, fucking again. Yeah, times. Yeah. And <laughs> so I'm in there and I was recording with uh, Trent Bell and Norman. Oh, at Bell Labs. Yeah. yeah. And he's super, super cool guy. And he was like, almost like doubled as my therapist, you know, because this mm-hmm. whole time we're going through this and then we end up talking about yeah, all this like, stuff. he's like, what's that about, man? Right, exactly. Yeah. And we're doing 760 vocal tracks and then we're talking about it and, so, and it was like a, over a year process. I kind of just chipped away at it and, uh, the whole thing was really therapeutic for me. Man, you know, really. I can't imagine so. the feeling of like having it done, you know, right. and being like, look at this thing I yes. made, you know? Yeah. That's gotta be an absolutely fantastic feeling. Dude, it was a huge deal. Uh, just, I'd done a lot of like really lo-fi indie albums and kind of 
you know, my whole thing when I did this one was, okay, man, I'm going to like do this the best that I can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to cut corners. I'm not going to be lazy about stuff. So I really went in and I did all the vocal tracks and I did the guitar stuff. And then we had all these guys come in and I mean, it took a long time. It was a lot of work, but, uh, at the end of it, I was like super, I was like, yes, you mm -hmm. know, I fucking did this. Yeah. So, yeah, man. It's, it's like, like only, only musicians or only people who have been in a studio environment can truly comprehend how awesome it is to just get like an album done. Right. And done to where you're not like, eh, we could have done that a little better. Yes. You know, yeah. afterwards. It's yeah. like, no, I'm happy with these. Right. And you finding know? musicians yeah. who are familiar with doing shit a thousand times. Yes. Yeah. We have yeah. a lot of guys come in. It's like their first studio session, you know? Right. And you're, we always got to tell them, like, you know, you're going to don't, it's not abnormal for you to do a vocal take, like, just on like verse one 26 times. Right. Exactly. It's not you. <laughs> yes. Right. It's not anybody else. Just yeah. how it is. It's how it is. Yeah. You know, yeah. you got to get used to the space. Well, and especially like if they've never done yeah. it before. Yeah. Like, how can you blame them? But yeah, the people will always be like, no, I've done that. What is that, like my fourth time? Yeah, you'll like, hey, brother. your fucking song. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. talking to a drummer exactly. here, man. Exactly. This guy's yeah. doing 30 takes, you right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, we spent yeah. the first month on just drums. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely so, fucking tough. That's and that's funny. how it is, man. And, like, back in the days, you know, whenever, however long ago back in the days was, uh, it took, like, two, three years to get a fucking album now. Now guys are just dropping singles right. off, just off the them. fucking line. It's just a conveyor yeah. belt, you know, just. Yeah. You know, but that's also why Lost Songs kind of lack a little bit of originality and mm -hmm. flavor and stuff. They ain't got that go-go juice in them, you yeah. know. Right. They yeah. don't really have time. Yeah. They don't really give, they don't really afford themselves the time to sit down and like custom tailor their own sound mm -hmm. and really dig deep in their songs. Right. You know, so yeah. there's still a lot of guys out there doing it. Yeah. I hope it, yeah. I hope it kind of comes back around. And right. Kind of gets off that whole like conveyor belt of kind of music kind of bittersweet because the like the home recording capabilities are awesome you know that yeah we're at this point where people can like really be at home and just kind of get this shit done and put something out like that yeah but at the same time it does take away some of that authenticity and you know yeah. kind of sets the stage for a lot of just cranking out generic shit exactly you know? so yeah. i think it's like the i mean i think we're like social creatures you know what i mean so like if it's only once in a bajillion people is there someone who can do and make music all by themselves in their room or something and it comes out and it's like you know holy shit i don't think they would have benefited from someone else helping them right yeah but i think man that's a good yeah, there's point. Sometimes, I don't, that's a good point yeah. well i just don't know like there's right. sometimes where i'm like oh man i just want to sit in my room and write my own shit but right. then you hit a point you start getting on like the bass tracks or even get on drum tracks yes. and you're like, fuck me, man. I just want to get this to somebody else to see what they can do with it. Well, I think you only yeah, got yeah. so much yeah, creative absolutely. juice, you know, you right. build it up yeah. and then you drain it out. Like you're when you're, like, when you're writing mm -hmm. stuff, but then, you know, you gotta, you need somebody else with and enough to come in and I guess why give a you a boost. The bedroom studios hit like a fucking all time high in like the mid 2010s. Mm -hmm. Right. When all like the focus, right? Little two channel interfaces. Yes. Right? I mean, like those yeah. things are fucking it. Like those are starting to be popping up in people's kitchen drawers, you know? Right. Like the, you have that drawer at home. It's like just the filled with random shit. Drawer. Yeah. yeah. And you just have a fucking random focus, right? right. Scarlet in there. And you're just like, where the fuck does this come from? Like, why is this in my That's aunt's crazy. house? You know, it's that shit just pops up. <laughs> right. Like, you don't yeah, know you yeah. have it. That's funny. And that like hit an all time high. And I remember that was when I was at ACM and everybody was kind of like, yeah, man, people. We were, I was building the studio, like Dylan and I were building the studio and I was talking to like a lot of my instructors about it and they were like, yeah, man, it's kind of rough to try to get like a studio off the ground at your level because you're basically have to, having to like beg people like to come out to your studio that's also kind of a bedroom studio, but right. like just nicer, Yeah, you know, but over time, I think everybody's starting to realize that it kind of sucks doing it by yourself and yeah, you sucks. benefit, you end up benefiting in the long run by having more hands on it. Right. And having yeah. And I think. You. For me, uh, physically going to a studio and just saying, all right, man, this is what I'm doing. And for the next four hours, this is the shit I'm doing. You yeah, know? it's like that mental divide. Right. Like, this is my, this yeah. is it. I'm, and I might just be my personality type, but when I'm at home, because I've tried to record at home, and then it's like I'm in the kitchen piddle fucking with something, yeah. and then I'll come back. And then, you know, you've your written kids a song, running through the house, right? and you're like, oh, you fuck, got I got to do that again. And all yeah. this stuff. And then, uh, <laughs> 
and you're and you're right, man. You get to a point where it's like, okay, I've put all this time on these vocals and this guitar work, and now I got to write a bass line. And you know, it's just I think getting in a focused area like this is the shit. This is what we're doing, and you know, bringing in the guys that man, I love this guy's style, and letting him have a mm-hmm. you know shot at it. I think it just keeps. The energy high. Yeah, I agree 110%. Yeah. You know? I, I find myself at home. I hit so many fucking, like, mental barriers at home. Yeah. But for some reason, when I come in here and I just start, you know, fucking around on acoustic, yeah. I'll come up with something. And I'm like, oh, shit. Right. That sounds original. It always happens here. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And then I'll go through a creative spot at home where it's like, it feels like it's coming. It's flowing pretty good. And then I'll hit a barrier. But, like, just having the ability to, like, get outside of your comfort at your house mm-hmm. and to come to a studio, I think it does unlock like creativity. Yeah, absolutely. Parts people's brains, yeah. you know, and it's also kind of like a good like shut off from the world. Right. You know, you yeah. kind of just leave all your shit at the door. Leave just, the shit. Yeah. Don't fuck with the phones. Just yeah. Use it. Just come in yeah. and just concentrate for like, you know, seven to mm-hmm. 12 hours. Right. Eight, yeah. eight to 12 hours. You know, Something just, like that. Yeah. yeah long, yeah. long studio day, 12 hours always feels good if you got some really good shit done. That's a long one, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's a long one. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, Josh, when did you start uh when did you start writing your own stuff? Uh I I remember so I would say by 14 I was pretty solid in in writing um and it just kind of it was like I was saying earlier it kind of just naturally progressed but I started out writing poems when I was younger and then I was learning how to play guitar and then just kind of started meshing those and by the time I was 14 I had a pretty established uh you know outline or whatever yeah. for my songwriting style and everything okay so from there it's pretty much what is your songwriting style do you start with uh kind of written lyrics and and go from there or does it kind of vary between it songs? Kind of, it kind of varies um i i always carry like it and now i use my phone i used to always have one of those little mini notebooks you know because mm-hmm. i'm always going and i'll get like a one-liner i'm like oh my god i love that and so i have like a a whole section of shit where I've scribbled certain lyrics that I can go back to if I need to. A lot of times though, it's, it's almost like a, a season or something, you know, like I'm kind of just doing life and shit's building up and building up. And then I'll hit a point and I'm like, fuck all of this. And about that time, you know, it's usually like a little eruption or something and just a song just kind of happen. And, Mm -hmm. um, I play a lot in between there and, you know, but, so it's kind of sometimes I have a melody. Um, sometimes I'll just do something on the, I'll just happen to hit something on the guitar that I like the sound of, um, you know, it's just. So it just kind of ha- like just whatever, happens, how it, right. it just forms itself right. kind of pretty organically. Yeah. Pretty organically. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, that's fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's real. It's always interesting because some people have, and it's funny because Tillis was like, I got a theory. Right. He said, "What? Did he, no, he said, I got a conspiracy, conspiracy theory. Yeah. Or he said, yeah, a conspiracy. Yeah, that's what he said. I got a conspiracy. The songs are already, already, are already wrote. Right. We're just, we're just filling in the space. Receiving them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. well, you know, and he was super stoned, <laughs> but him and Eric both that's were both blazed. Yeah. But, yeah. but they were, I was like, wow, damn, man. And then we've had other people say like, um, uh, you know, I always, some, some people said, I always start with the chorus. Right. You know, I always, it's like one line in a chorus, one band was in that had, uh, I think Limp Wizard said that they mm-hmm. just, they almost just have like code words for songs. Like they'll just be working on a riff and right. then they'll just be like, they called one, uh, staple gun, staple gun. They called one like brick or something. Uh, and then yeah. they just took those names and kind of fit a lyric and melody to oh, okay. them. And yeah, so yeah. now they have a, a song called, they played it for us and it was the actual song staple gun and it was they were like yeah this just kind of materialized that's it, it. just kind of popped out of grabbed it out of the air while it was yeah, there it's always right. cool to hear like everybody's ways of writing yeah because everybody Definitely. has there's no obviously there's no wrong way and right. there's no right yeah. way but it's just right. it's yeah, that's why I like cool. songwriting you go like these you see these like songwriting retreats and like you pay all this money to go like have somebody teach you how to write songs just, just I always, feels I, so weird I always wonder how those work it's I just, know it's just I don't like know. how do you because like your way might work for you but it's not gonna work yeah, for everybody see I don't you know, know uh, I don't know any two guys that really 
write songs the same way. You know, everybody's kind of in their own place. Um, they feel things different ways. They, it's just like a, I think it's a very individual process, you know. Definitely. So, yeah, you shouldn't, definitely shouldn't like put rules on something. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and I will say, it's like, weird. if I had the opportunity to go to one of those songwriters retreats, I'd probably take it just to see, you know, yeah. just to yeah. experience that. But I don't know. Yeah, it would be, it would definitely be kind of strange in the sense that, like, I do, pref- I do write under pressure, you know, if there's a deadline mm-hmm. or something, I do write pretty well. Um, I don't know how that feeling would translate into like, here I am with these other people who are also under pressure writing with me and like collaborating, but like we have a deadline kind of, I don't know. It just like writing a, it, it just be a little different, you know? So do you, are, so you go, do you think you're like writing a song collectively as a group or does each person write a song and then present it to the, Oh, all of that. Yeah. Okay. I, I've only talked to a couple people that have actually been, you know, I think, been, I, know. I think Troy, Oh. had been to one and he had talked about it briefly. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess I do know somebody. And yeah. somebody right. else I had talked to at ACM. But I think he just, I think that wasn't like a paid one. I think it was just like a bunch of like guys got together and like, hey, let's get together. And did, did he like, uh, was it like a, one of those ones? He was he, invited. I don't remember. I know there's ones that are, they're like, they're obviously, you don't have to, Pay to get in. You're just, there's just a bunch of guys that like want to get around and write shit. No, I think this was like a bit like it was like seven or eight people to this uh, little retreat deal. Okay, because and I've they legit ads. just like wrote yeah. songs for like a week, but it was like a private thing. It wasn't like a yeah. sign up like a cruise ship kind of deal. Guys, I've seen like legit like ads for like but on a deposit of eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Know, oh yeah. Stay That's at this kinda, cabin. It's just like wow. Right. Yeah. But yeah, like the, a whole he retreat said, yeah. Arizona kind of thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that seems a little like, like uh, I don't know, almost like scammy. Yeah. Well, and like yeah, like timesharish. But yeah, like, time-sharish. Oh my God, I really <laughs> hope something that comes out of this. But yeah, you know, like, but yeah, he said that basically like all for like four or three or four days. It was just wake up, you know, meet with everybody and and. Um, hang out kind of figure out what you wanted to do for the day um and he and then you may just like be like hey you guys want to write a song today or whatever to a couple of the people that at there that one that you hadn't wrote with right. up to that point and it was just like okay and then you just went somewhere and and just started with ideas and hacked away at those mm-hmm. and then he said he also had time where he just wrote a couple songs by himself right. was just sitting there and just wrote a couple by himself said it was very uh inspiring yeah. Just being around so many other people that, um, and on this <laughs> makes me think of, uh, I was listening to an interview and it was just like a short little clip on like Instagram reels or TikTok or something. And it was like Bailey Zimmerman, um, who, uh, he was talking about how he had like, he was at a restaurant or something with like Chad Kroger and oh, I've Jelly seen Roll this article. or something yeah, like that. You know, those, yeah, the, yeah. The, I didn't and, read the article, but I saw the title. And he was like, yeah. he was like, yeah, dude. And then Chad was like, Hey, what are you doing tomorrow? You want to come up to fly up to like Ontario or whatever? I got my mansion and we'll write some songs together or right. something. He's like, I went up there with Chad Kroger and, and it, we had like a little two day songwriters thing. where We just wrote a couple songs with another guy and, I stood in the booth where How You Remind Me was recorded, you know, and I was like, that's kind of, that's something, right? you know? <laughs> oh, so hold on. Chad Kroger, is is that Nickelback? Oh, yeah, yeah that's yeah, Nickelback. Okay. Nickelback. I knew yeah, the yeah, name. Yeah. I was like, man, I know the yeah, name. Yeah, I know yeah. the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> Look at this graph. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man, I actually, uh, and I hate to admit it, but I do like Nickelback. Well, so, hey, man, it's totally, the, I got nothing against Nickelback. They've got some I great love, songs, man. I love, yeah. there's a couple Nickelback songs that We're are, all guilty of joining the hate train on Nickelback, wherever yes. it was. At some yeah. point. Can, yeah. There's nostalgia with me for Nickelback. Right. You know, I don't think, yeah, I man. think if I didn't listen to it when I was a kid, or my sisters didn't listen to it right. when I was a kid, I think I would probably be like, ah, it's not for me. Yeah. But like, fuck, man, side of a bullet. I remember listening to that shit on my Zoom. Yeah. And getting so fucking amped right. up for like, you know, seventh grade football or something. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah, so was, man, it's, there's nostalgia there for me. It's there's, I mean, they're well-structured songs and I've asked myself a lot of times. I'm like, when I'm listening, I'm like, okay, man, just imagine if this was like a dirty grubby dude 
drinking a Pabst Blue Ribbon in a shitty garage. Yeah. You know, I'd fucking love it then. They're well fucking, you know what they're I mean? amazingly produced. So, yeah, and they're, so, they're fucking heavy, man. Right. Like, take all the Nickelback pop shit away. Yeah, I take they're the... fucking heavy. Yeah, they got, I mean, I think They got some heavy oh, shit. They're, they're good cool. players, too. I right. mean, you know, they're, yeah. they're talented it's, players. It's good. And as formulaic as some of the songs seem, everybody has songs that are formulaic. Right. And it just right. so happens yeah, that absolutely. Comedy Central took an absolute shit on Nickelback in, like, the early 2000s with that. That was the start of That was the start of, yeah. like, that. Yeah, they did, like, an ad series that was, like... Right. You never be as boring as Nickelback or Nickelback sucks or something like that. So yeah. that's where it started. South Park picked that up. You know, it just started from there and it's just kind of been a train mm-hmm. of hate. But like, Grant, do you give it to them? They've handled it pretty well. They're just kind of like, a, yeah, fuck it. It's just they're wild kind of, that they're, they're still selling out arenas. Yeah. Oh, they're, yeah. Doing, they're, they're doing, doing just the fuck fine. They want. Yeah. 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 They're, they're doing just fine. Could, they're one of those bands. They can do whatever the fuck. Yeah. They Chad Kroger Absolutely. can fly up Absolutely. Bailey Zimmerman and hang out exactly. at, right. whenever yeah. he wants, but I cannot do that. Yeah. And that's I can't even Fantastic. fly. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't going on and barely even drive. Spirit yeah. Airlines, dude. I yeah. gotta, like, right. We all well, have to get out on the runway well, and push Lord, it ourselves. Lord help you. Know, yeah. Fucking land the plane yourself. That's great. <laughs> well, Josh, what about... Uh, so what about the second song? You said that was a new one. <clears throat> that is a new one. Um, I'm working on a, a newer album about to start recording, I think, in January. Uh that song was was really came came about like um through kind of uh, through the you know the last several years with a divorce and then I got sober um I've been sober for coming up on 3 years so oh, congratulations man. thanks man so that was that song's more about kind of navigating the struggles of uh, you know getting clean and and getting through all this shit and getting to a good spot again and then keeping it you yeah. know what I mean? It's like through it's like the a fight every single yeah, day. Yeah, just kind of more minute. like the yeah. maintenance of just like just being at peace and chilling and um, not generating any bullshit and not, you know, not seeking it out, just kind of being in a good place and just letting that part of it happen, you know? Yeah. So um, that was a sweet song, man. I, I love yeah. the. Uh, Thanks, man. The. Um, mm, the right. That part. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that was yeah. awesome. Yeah. So. Um, not quite. Crash test dummies, but yeah, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. yeah, that guy. <laughs> was that yeah, their yeah, only yeah. song? Did they ever do anything they had else? Coffee and they, well, they had that. No, they owl, had that. They uh, had that. How does a duck know? What's that one coffee song? Coffee Which and direction? chocolate. Or, South coffee and chocolate, or whatever. Coffee something. No, I think or, that was Marcy's Playground. Are you thinking of Sex and Candy? No, sex and Candy. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Crash test dummies have a song with something. I oh, know it's a. Uh, Something about maybe tea or something like that, and afternoon or afternoon something. It's off yeah, the God know. shuffles his feet album. Yeah, that's the only one I'm, si- but I'm that's familiar the only song with. I ever heard. Yeah. yeah. So does he talk like that actually, or was that his singing voice? I have no fucking idea. Because I mean, that would be really that's weird. interesting. He's got an amazing bear. Hey, bro. Voice. Jesus. Fuck yeah. Him. Yeah, but he doesn't look like that way at all. No, He's not at all. Like, that's where it's like really. Yeah, you're kind off. of shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, like when British people sing when beautiful, uh, uh, accentless. Right, uh, like I'm always suspicious Mary. of that. Yeah, and I'm really suspicious. Like, My dad is Super like, sucks. Like, what's that? Who's the like the Adele is like the... Adele's like, thank you, thank yeah. you very yeah. much, thank right. you. And, and super like, just Whoa, you know, straight American. My dad's like, like yeah. it, my dad's super cynical about all of it. He's like. That's I think, a fake. That's a fake voice. I I'm like, no, it's know. not. Dude, they, they sing like that. He's like, how? Tell they, me how. I'm I like, think I they know, know that the the British accent is like sexy and hot, so they just. They really, when they're talking, they're like, like, hello. And, yeah. you know, but really it's like, it's like I don't exotic. need to talk like this. Yeah. You know, I can well, talk. Well, who's the fucking British people that are like considered like the deep south of Great the Britain? The Cockneys? Yeah. They're, they're like, like oh, re- mate. They're, yeah. They're really <laughs> fucking like train spotting. Fucking yes. Accent. <laughs> like, like the you fucking all down yeah. to the seventh, huh? Yeah. That's the right. one I'm like, oh, God, that is not yeah, an attractive yeah. voice. Someone's going to be like, these fucking like idiots Amy don't sound anything yeah. like yeah. Right. Amy Winehouse. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Amy fucking Winehouse. Man. RIP to a real one. Yeah. Canceled. Man, Josh, he, well, you had said uh, earlier that you were you were on a label up in uh-huh. Tulsa. Yeah. What's the name of the label? It's uh, Sun, Sunset Club Records, and uh, they're out of Tulsa. And I've got um, this current record I have is on their website. And then um, 
we're also going to press some vinyl, I think, here in the next couple of months. So oh, fuck yeah, the vinyl deal is all fucked up, man, right now. So I'm well, trying to tell you because we were talking about like the supply chain. Yeah, 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 it's it's a super the weights, um, man, it's it's I mean, it's like nine months or some shit if you try to do a high run. So I think shit. we're doing like they've been doing lower runs and getting faster return times, but they're obviously having to pay a little more. It's just a whole shit show, yeah. but um, I am like in the process of getting some vinyl press. So I did the CDs just, um, it was a cool thing. It has artwork and we can give them out or whatever, you know? So, uh, but they've been, you know, they're, they're pretty solid. They've got some good bands. So. Sick, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What are, yeah, what are some of the other out. bands up there? Uh, Labrys is a, is a really good okay, band. Yeah. Um, and she's the is she the bass player from Broncho? I think is correct. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm familiar yeah. with Labyrinth. So, and, and she's yeah. putting out a new she's putting a full length out on uh, Sunset Club. So that's that's going to be really cool. Well, that's sick, man. Uh, they've they've got a lot of uh, kind of cool cassette tape stuff they're doing, and, and it's just pretty neat. So, how'd you get hooked up with them? So I've known uh, Trey Livingston and his son are the ones that run Sunset Club. Uh, I was on Trey's label chemical wire records in 2010 and i put out a couple of uh some vinyl records and uh me and him played together and and did all that kind of stuff for several years then and that's kind of just how it developed yeah morphed so, into that right that's sick, so, man. Oh. Uh, as soon as i had something you know it's like okay man i'm really i'm gonna record another album i'm doing this um i pretty much got in touch with him as soon as i could say I am actually doing this. This is mm-hmm. going to happen, you know? And so he was really supportive and receptive of it. Oh, that's dope, yeah. man. Well, that's yeah. fantastic. That's, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, do, you, do you play a ton of live shows? I don't play a ton of live shows. Um, I'm working on that, but it's, man, it's really hard. Like, I had a lot of really great guys in the studio play on that album. Um, I had uh, Tommy McKenzie. He's currently playing for the Flaming Lips. And he did a lot of the bass work and guitar work, but he's just fucking phenomenal, dude. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, how do you find someone yeah, that like, like replicates that? And, how, yeah. and I, how can I be like, hey, man, you should, you know, Flaming Lips? No, man, come play with me. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> I got nine followers on Spotify. Fuck them, you know. And so, don't it's you like, want to start from the beginning, yeah, bro? <laughs> like, let's grind it out. Don't you want some freedom, bro? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, obviously that's like a no go. And and the same uh, the the key guy. Uh, was from a good band. I mean, everybody's just really great. So I, I, as far as those guys went, man, they were super great and awesome in the studio, but it's just not a realistic mm-hmm. option, you know? Um, so it's been a lot about finding people that are available and that can play and, and do things like that. It's so. like the un, the, the unexpressed bane of being a musician right. is finding another musician who can just I'm not not like fit into the mold but just like it's a puzzle piece right you know yeah. like find yeah. that missing puzzle piece yeah. to your to your band's puzzle right and it's fucking impossible it's so much harder man I thought I really thought that okay I'm gonna get this album done and recorded and then I'll just go give somebody a copy of this CD and they can listen to it and learn the songs and you know I'll do that with f- four or five people and then we're just gonna go rip and roll man but yeah. it has not been the case at all man you know that's so, um, we know that feeling. All too well. oh, yeah, definitely. it's just kind of a, it's a process and I'm still in the middle of that. Um, I am doing like getting together some acoustic shows and everything, but at the same time when you've got an album, that's like a full album, then to go play it acoustically. It's almost like a little bit um, of a disservice. To it's that, kind of, you know, it's kind of boring in a way, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's so, um, but man, I'm getting that. That is in the works. Yeah. Well, I yeah. wish you the best of luck, dude. Because I've fucking, we've been there, and we're still we float in that area a lot in that gray area of right. like, who the fuck do we know? It did. Yeah, know? yeah. Oh yeah. And it's like scout scouring my Facebook and Instagram friends. Right. I'm like, come on, somebody's got to just be able to play a fucking keyboard. Yeah, I'm you know? so bad about that too. I'll see so anybody I see playing an instrument on Facebook. 
I send him a friend request. I'm like, yeah. who the fuck is this guy? You know yeah. what I mean? Right. Just, like, hey, man, but, uh, you want to come out and it, hang out? And, right. And, and, so, and, and I'm not weird. Please yeah, come right. and play no, music. This is totally normal, I promise. <laughs> I'm out here in the middle of the woods and, uh, you know. Let's so. just jam. Yeah. Just hey, so man. Yeah. hey, man. Well, people, we somehow get people out here. Right. And we're, yeah. you know, we're not like way out there, but it is, I, I know... But there are roads long enough. Just to yeah, like, it's, okay. it's long enough to be a little quick. It gets yeah. a little sketchy. <laughs> yeah. and especially yeah. then when we're they always call and it's always like we're at the end of the dirt road. Yeah, all like, the way oh, down. Fuck all the way yeah. down. Right. People, it, yeah. for some reason, it'll me. kick them out right down there at the. There's a little field right down there, right and down the road, and they're like. Yeah. Am I here? It's and just I'm long like, enough. No, like, just keep going. Yeah. You, know? you can't run to safety. Like, you're not going to run to the highway. <laughs> if shit goes bad, you're not going to yeah. run back to civilization. Yeah, just walk just far enough. Yeah, we're in the tree line, man. Now, no just one's going to the tree line. No one's yeah. going to come out here. <laughs> They're just like, oh, fuck. Oh, man. man. <laughs> yeah, no. We, right, we're the fucking last studio on the left. <laughs> right. Shit, dude, I, <laughs> I know people have come out here and been like, where the fuck am I? Right. You know, yeah. but it's like, it's, well, it's funny because w- when we were younger, we had like bandmates out here and stuff, and we had a little project thing that we were doing where we recorded some up there. We didn't have this, and uh, they all came out here and they were like, "God, man, y'all are just middle of fucking nowhere, aren't you? Yeah, there's Jesus, not even a yeah. damn McDonald's around right. here." I, yeah. I was like, oh, "Fucking Starbucks!" Like, like, there's yeah. twenty minutes that way over in right. Chant, and they were like, "Oh my god, it's forever." Twenty yeah. minutes, and then yeah, yeah. we got super drunk that night, and we woke up the next morning, and they were like. We got to go get some fucking IHOP. And so it was when that IHOP on I-35, that trucker right. place was right. Yeah. So we were like, okay, hop in the car. And, you know, 25 minutes later, we're there. And they're like, you know, you're really not that far Which, from like, the city or whatever. I was 20 like, minutes, 20 minutes on an open highway where everybody's going like 80 yeah. is totally different from 20 minutes in the city. Yes. Where you're going like stop by by stop, stop by. by. That shit yeah. is fucking that, miserable. That literally is a fucking time warp. Right. That shit takes longer. I swear to God. Yeah. That's my conspiracy. <laughs> there is 20 minutes in the city. It has to take longer than 20 minutes on right. like a turnpike. Yeah. It just fucking has to. Well, there's something wrong with actually like being in a car and having it running and moving for an hour and only going 10 miles. Yeah. Like, that just bothers yeah. me. Just like, like, that's I so like, weird. I don't it's like that what feeling, this was intended to be. Exactly. <laughs> like, this I is wrong. Fast. Fundamentally <laughs> yeah. wrong right this now. This is fucked. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're stopped, and then the homeless guy's walking fast right. past no you shit. or whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> For some reason, yeah. <laughs> For some reason, our buddy Mason always fucks with me on it. It's just that always irks me. Like, in the middle of fucking nowhere. I'm like, my man, we are yeah. like 30 minutes from a major U.S. city. We're right. out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah. Like... But we can go 80 on a highway for like 20 miles without stopping. Yeah. Tell me anybody in the city that can do that. Exactly. Shit. <laughs> like and have well, fucking fun, man. Yeah. Like, yeah and then your I car's say, never been yeah. over 35. <laughs> I say that. Yeah. I'm like, like, their car, they don't have a car. <laughs> they just ride those, those, the uh, sc- Scooters, scooters. Yeah. Yeah, 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 fucking. Good. Those <laughs> they just get a, a year. Right. They just get a yearly pass. And I love like, <laughs> every time they clean out the fucking Bricktown Canal. They find like forty five fucking scooters in there. Yes, they will just get drunk and they're just like. I think I'd be that guy, there. man. I really, you know, like <laughs> it's a scooter. rental scooter, I've like, like seeing fucking stuff. jump it off something. Yeah, I've always like <laughs> seeing stuff falling in the water when it makes a big splash. Right. My monkey brain's like, oh yeah, that's nice. Yes, you know, exactly. so I'd probably throw one in there too. You know, never had the opportunity. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Well, um, you got a new album. You said you you're working. You're gonna start working on a new yes, album at the uh, beginning of this January. Year? January, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's sick, man. Yeah. Well, fuck yeah. I'm fucking now. I'm excited for that. Thanks, yeah. Man. You know, you have to yeah. do a follow up spark and plug and right. do a couple ones from do. that one. Yeah. yeah maybe cool. maybe at that point you'll have a a couple guys right. around you that yeah. you can kind of yeah formulate hopefully some cool stuff. We'll see That'd how that badass. goes. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, if you ever need help or anything like that, yeah, you can always give us a shout, and we're right on, man. More than happy to be a uh, guinea pigs in any kind of a studio experiment right. because that's a uh, we we we've had a few guys that yeah. have been like uh if you guys ever want to do anything weird <laughs> call me and i'm like any excuse I will. <laughs> you can give me to fuck with my endless amount of shit fuck in with the right. studio. Toe you guys yeah. have some great shit you guys Thanks, got some man. good yeah. shit here man any, yeah. any excuse i can get to fuck with that shit i'll right. take it absolutely yeah, <laughs> yeah. i find yeah. myself in some really weird scenarios though <laughs> yeah in the name of just fucking with shit yeah. right yeah well, fantastic, man. Thanks again for coming out. Right on, um, thank you. And everybody, you can find, uh, is it all under Old Man Winter? Old on- Man Winter. Yeah, the album is uh, The Ghosts of El Camino Real. It's on every music platform, and then it's also available at sunsetclubrecords.com. Okay, cool. And so, you're yeah. on, uh, it's all on like... Social, you, yeah, yeah, my Instagram is uh, Old Man Winter Music, I think. Okay. So Sick. I'm 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go. Everybody, go hop on oh, that yeah. train right. and, and check Josh's stuff out because it's badass and, and we love it. And thanks so much for coming All out, right, man. man. Thank you so this much. This has I been the Spark it. and Plug Talks. Here's the Peace best out. part: taking the headphones off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ear shirt. See you guys. <laughs>